What's up guys? It is Brandon from the Two Piece Man and welcome back to another Premier League prediction. Week four, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you what. Last week was freaking insane. We had a few ups and we had a few freaking downs. Some teams played brilliantly and some teams played like absolute dog wank. But we're gonna find out who those teams are. But first of all, first of all, before I get into this, don't forget to hit that like button, all right? And click the subscribe button, all right? Because I'm seeing a lot of people watching the video, but you ain't clicking the freaking subscribe button or like button. So just leave a like, that's, that's what I'm saying. Just leave a like, leave a like and just subscribe, that's it. That's all. Leave a like button and click the subscribe button. So, going into week four, ladies and gentlemen. Going into week four. All right, we're gonna start off with the first game at 12.30. All right, so lunchtime kickoff, essentially, on a Saturday, the first game of week four. Southampton versus Manchester United. Now, let me talk about this game. Let me talk about Manchester United's uh, performance against Crystal Palace. I thought it was very good. They had a, a lot of position of the ball. But they weren't really working the Crystal Palace goalkeeper as much as I thought they would. Honestly, I thought they would beat Crystal Palace 3-0 easy because Crystal Palace don't really have a lot going forward and their defence is absolute crap. Well, it looks as though it's been strengthened by freaking Gary Cahill out of all players. But realistically, I honestly thought Manchester United would win that. After drawing against Wolves, I thought, I thought okay, the draw against Wolves, Wolves is a semi-hard opponent. And against Crystal Palace, I'm thinking, all right, these guys will get the win. But unfortunately, that was that wasn't the case, ladies and gentlemen. Was there a penalty when uh, the I think Martin Kelly fouled? Um, was it Marshall down in the box? In my eyes, I thought that was a penalty, but the ref didn't give it. I thought that was a penalty, but the ref didn't give it. Rashford had a penalty when uh, I think Martin Kelly. Or I don't I forgot what player it was, but they found McTominay in the box. I didn't even think that, that that one was really a penalty to be honest. It was it was there was contact, but it was like slight contact, let's just be honest. And they gave that a penalty and I'm just like, damn. If they're giving that a penalty and there's barely any contact. And the Marshall one isn't isn't a penalty. You know, there's a lot of contact. The guy fouls him, hence the reason Marshall's off balance, hence the reason he skies the shot over the bar. But Looking at the penalty, when Matamani got fouled, how is Rashford missing that? Don't get me wrong, we all miss penalties, I understand that, but for Man United to miss two penalties in a row, that's that says a lot. It was very unfortunate for him because it hit the inside of the post and it went out for a goal kick. That's the worst thing, so that's just rare. But the fact that it happened, I thought Rashford would bury it. After Pogba um, missed what the Wolves won. It's, I don't understand them. It's a bit mad. It's honestly a bit mad. And before, I shouldn't even be, the Crystal Palace first goal was weak. That was terrible defending from Lindelof. That was an easy header and you let Schluck beat you to that. You were weak in the air, but you would expect a centre back to win that. You would expect a centre back like Lindelof to win that header. But it looks like Schluck wanted the header more than you did. And then uh, Maguire played, what's his name? Uh, Jordan Ayew onside and it was an easy finish on for, for Jordan Ayew. Fair play to him because most players would have pretty much skied that or missed the chance. But to Jordan Ayew, he kept calm, he kept his composure and he stuck it into the back of the net. So I was good on him. If anything, he was the best player on that pitch. I'm watching his hold up play and the way he held the ball against uh, the Manchester United defenders and the way he brought um, Crystal Palace into play, like how he moved them up the pitch. Like, it was world-class centre-forward play. That's the type of centre-forward you want. And he did a little showboating as well, where he did a little trick. So that shows you he was gaining a lot of confidence and he was enjoying his football. Where he came to Manchester United, he's basically saying that Manchester United were a piece of trash, essentially, given that little bit of um, trickery over the pass. The first goal, beautiful, um, the second goal for Manchester United, that made it, what, 1-1? It was a beautiful goal from Daniel James, but Manchester United just took too long when it came to like what uh, taking their chances and really working the keeper. They didn't really do a lot. 
and there was just a lot, a lot of frustration. I could sense the frustration around Old Trafford when Manchester United kept giving the ball away. But that was a beautiful finish from Daniel James. And David De Gea, again. David De Gea, again, costs Manchester United a point. It costs him a point, ladies and gentlemen. The Van Aanholt shot, I don't care what anyone says, David De Gea should be saving that all day. The keeper of his quality, and his class, he should be freaking saving that. Pogba was awful. I don't care, Pogba was awful. Fair enough, he won the ball against Zaha to start the play and let Daniel James start. But when he's using the ball against who? What, what player was it? Benteke. He lost the ball against Benteke. Out of all players, who scores a goal what, once every two seasons or something like that. He used the ball against Benteke. Zaha, you have, give, you have to give credit to Zaha because he starts to charge. Even though he loses the ball, Bernard Anholt gets the ball. He just fires it at the hair. And I would honestly expect the hair to save that. Like that's just ridiculous. Like how is the hair how is David the hair not saving that? How? That's ridiculous. And he's supposed to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world, and you're letting goals like that go in. That's pathetic, man. For Southampton, they won their game against Brighton. But let's be honest, Southampton have been um off it recently. They haven't really done that much. So for this one, Southampton against Manchester United, I'm going to go with Southampton 0, no, Manchester United 2. I reckon Manchester United will get a result there, just knowing that <coughs> Southampton are worse than Crystal Palace and I think Southampton will be on the front foot at the start, but Man United will slowly get back into the game and I reckon there will be a goal, or two goals from Martial. But Man United needs to sort out that performance because that it just... To have all that possession and not really work their goalkeeper is disgraceful. And for David De Gea not to save that shot at the end, to at least get them a point, is bloody disgraceful. Alright, next game. Oh, one of the games at 3 o'clock, Crystal Palace versus Aston Villa. Now, for this game, Crystal Palace did bits against Manchester United, like I just said, and that's probably boosted their confidence. If they're getting a huge three points for Roy Hudson. A huge three points for Roy Hudson at Old Trafford. That guy must have been so gassed. He must have shot his pants, honestly. He must have been so gassed when Crystal Palace got that win. He's probably shot himself. He's probably shot himself that he actually got a win at Old Trafford. That's the first time Crystal Palace have beaten Manchester United at Old Trafford. Like, that's that's actually ridiculous. Alright, but for them against Aston Villa, Aston Villa uh, beating Everton 2 0. A goal from. Their new striker Wesley, he gets his um, campaign going with, with a goal, and the second goal that came from who was it again? Second goal, yes, um, Al Ghazi in the 95th minute. So for this one, it's going to be a very very t- tough game. I think Crystal Palace will cause Aston Villa a lot of problems, especially Wilfred Zaha at Selhurst Park. But I reckon Villa will hit them on the counter attack and get uh, an advantage over them and just beat them. So for this one, I'm going to say Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa 2. I feel as though um, Jack Grealish needs to go into the spaces more. I feel as though John McGinn needs to take more long shots as well to work the Crystal Palace goalkeeper. And what Zaha is really going to do is kind of try, try and drive at Aston Villa because I know Aston Villa can't really handle Wilfred Zaha at all. Let's just be honest with you. And they have to start Jordan Ayew because I think he deserves a start for the next game um, over Benteke. Especially the way he played at Old Trafford. He was magnificent. Alright, next game. At Stamford Bridge, ladies and gentlemen. Chelsea versus Sheffield United. Now, reverse Norwich at Carrow Road. And let me tell you, my heart was racing because we needed a win. I didn't care how it came. We needed a freaking win, ladies and gentlemen. Guess what? We got the damn win. We got the damn win. I knew Team Puki was going to score. I knew Norwich were going to score two goals, let's just be honest, because we're going to throw for shit. But, brilliant balling from Aspilicueta, and then your boy, Tammy Bloodclot Abraham. A man like Tammy gets his first goal. Gets his first goal for Chelsea as he puts, slots it into the bottom right corner. A cool, calm, composed finish as well. A cool, calm, composed finish. That was absolutely tremendous. I don't care. And then they scored. Um, I forgot what player scored for Norwich, but it was a beautiful goal, a lovely, um, lovely wanted passing. And then 
second goal from Chelsea, Mason Mount, ladies and gentlemen, Mason Mount. I don't know who passed it into Pulisic. I think it was it was either, either Kovacic or Emerson. I don't know who it was or Barkley or whoever. Anyway, Pulisic picked up the ball. It was lovely movement as well. Plays it into Mason Mount. Mason Mount's path. Mason Mount cuts in and hammers it into the top rank corner. That is world class number ten play from freaking Mason Mount. All right, that's that's classic Cam. That's classic Frankie Lampard. All right, that's exactly what Frank Lampard would do. That was beautiful football, and I don't care what anyone says, right? That was absolutely tremendous football from Chelsea. Just the way we came in and the way we scored that. All right. And the goal from Tammy Abraham at the end, his second goal, where he receives it, he gives himself space, he cuts in on one arm Norwich defender, beats the other Norwich defender as well, and hammers it through one of their legs into the back of the net. That is world-class centre-forward play from Tammy Abraham and we freaking keep the freaking win ladies and gentlemen we get our the win Frank Lampard gets his first freaking win against Norwich <coughs> Sheffield United losing what 2-1 uh, against Leicester City so going by that their confidence levels are pretty low after losing that so I'm pretty guessed about that so for this one I'm gonna say Chelsea 4 Sheffield United 2. I know we'll concede two goals because let's be honest, we can't let them for shit as usual. Uh, I think Tammy will get his, I think Tammy will score two goals and I think Mason Mount will score two goals as well. They're the real youngsters for Chelsea. That was Chelsea's youngest ever team against Norwich as well. Um, I want to see more from them. I think they're two uh, world class players and I hope they just bring more to Chelsea. I feel as though we need Rudiger to come back as well because our defence is absolutely shocking and we need more protection at the back. Um, it was kind of weird when Kante wasn't there. Covered Kitch played well, but it wasn't really a lot of protection at the back. Hence the reason why I know it would just cut into us and stay into us very, very easy. And I, I freaking, I freaking cry and and just worry when we first big teams away because we would get sorted like that. And I know we will. All right, next game: Newcastle versus Watford. Now Newcastle, Newcastle beat Tottenham. Like, what? I couldn't watch the game. Yes, I couldn't watch the game. What yesterday? I checked my phone this morning. Saying to my phone, right, I gotta make a friendly um, prediction. I look at the Tottenham scores. I'm thinking Tottenham one, and then I'm seeing Tottenham nil, Newcastle one, at their home ground. I think it was Joe Linton or something like that. Maybe it, I think it was their striker. So, ladies and gentlemen, Tottenham have lost against Newcastle one nil, and they're gonna head at the Emirates. To versus Arsenal. That's not looking good, ladies and gentlemen. That is not looking good. When you're losing at home against Newcastle, and you're going to go to Arsenal, you're going to go to Arsenal's ground, it's not good. It's it's not looking good, that's what I'm saying. But for Newcastle, go back to Newcastle, that's a huge win for them. Watford still, still losing, still being that absolute dog wanks, and haven't won a game at all in the Premier League. That's three L's they've taken. Um, these are three one to West Ham. I'm gonna go one 0 Newcastle because I don't see Newcastle being good enough to score two. I'm just, that's just me being honest. I think Joe Linton will score again. Either him or Almiron will score. So Newcastle one, Watford nil. All right, Man City versus Brighton. All right, let's just be honest. Man City will claw them. Uh, Man City beat Bournemouth three one. Am I surprised by that? No, because we know how good Man City are. Uh, who scored it? Well, Sergio Aguero, Raheem Sterling, David Silva. And another guy scored for Bournemouth, but no one really gives a shit. Let's just be honest. We know Man City were going to dominate them from the freaking get go. I knew Man City were going to just clot them. Uh, Man City are against Brighton, who haven't, who also lost two 0 against Southampton, and they're going to burst Man City at the Etihad. So you know what's going to happen. I'm just going to say it now. Man City four, Brighton nil. No. Man City will whoop their clot. Two goals from Raheem Sterling, a goal from Kevin De Bruyne, and Wells. A goal from Bernardo Silva. Simple as that. Man City will just claw them. I don't even say anymore. All right, next game: West Ham versus Norwich City. Now, West Ham won their game against Watford three-one. Even though Watford have been playing like a pile of wanks. Um, I think the new guy scored twice, so I think he, he gets he gets himself off the mark. Norwich City now. Norwich City actually played really well. It's just that their defense is worse than Chelsea's. That's what I'm saying. Timu Puki again scoring. What? How many goals is that? I think that's what five goals he scored already. I think he's the top goal scorer. Is he? I think he's the top goal scorer. 
or maybe bombing, it's Raheem Sterling, I don't really know, but either way, Timu Puki has scored, and he's becoming a real top goal, goal scoring threat for freaking Norwich, and next season, I can see big teams just trying to sign him, I, I, I can see it and I can feel it, Timu Puki has been absolutely amazing for Norwich, Getting into, running into the channels and just banging the goals in, I think West Ham will, will play good football, but I think Norwich City, on the counter, especially Timu Puki, will get his chance and he will put it in the back of the net. So for this one, I'm going to say Norwich City 3, West Ham 1. Next game, Leicester City versus Bournemouth. Now, Leicester City actually got um, a win against Sheffield United. When you look at it, playing Sheffield United away is a very, very tough game, I'm not going to lie. Just looking at how the way Sheffield United set up and their formation and the way they play, for Newcastle, for not Newcastle, for Leicester City to actually get a win there is very, very difficult. Um, so big up, big up Leicester City. Bournemouth losing 3 1 against Man City. Let's just be honest, Bournemouth had no chance. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go Leicester City 3, Bournemouth 1. <laughs> I just see Jamie Vardy just clotting them. Uh, Bournemouth, they're not really gonna do that much. Let's just be honest. Um, at the King Power Stadium, I don't see Bournemouth really getting any result there. So I'm gonna say Leicester City 3, Bournemouth 1. 5.30 um, on a Saturday, who is it, Burnley versus on Liverpool. I think Liverpool will just clout them as well. Um, Burnley, in their last game, who were, what did they do? Yeah, they drew 1-1 against Wolves. Um, it's going to be a very, very tough game. But Liverpool uh, clouted Arsenal. So, you know, that was light work for them. And for Burnley, yeah... They won't win, even though it's at that ground at Turf Moor. I just don't see them win. So for this one, I'm going to say Burnley nil, Liverpool two. I think Liverpool will struggle at the start, but then they'll get into the game more. I think Mane will open up the scoring, scoring one of um, a goal, and then Salah will score as well. So I'm going to say Liverpool, Burnley nil, Liverpool two. Right, Sunday, first of September. Who is playing? Oh yes, Everton versus Wolves. Everton lost their game 2-0 against Aston Villa, so I don't really see them getting a result against Wolves. Wolves drew 1-1 against Burnley, but yet again, Burnley just play long balls, you might as well just call them long ball FC, let's just be real. Uh, dashing long balls into Ashley Barnes. Barnes. Uh, I've kind of been impressed with Wolves, to be honest with you, drawing against Manchester United. Uh, probably should have beaten Burnley, but Burnley are quite a hard team, you're going to have to give them that. Uh... I just see Wolves class in Everton at Goodison Park. I just don't see... If Everton can't beat Aston Villa, then I don't understand what hope you actually have against Wolves. And Wolves are a hard team um, when you play them away at Goodison Park. So for this one, I'm going to say Everton 1, Wolves 4. I think Wolves would literally just clot them again. I just think Wolves would just batter them, honestly. Uh, that Raheem right, and Scott will score two goals and that Diego. And I think Ruben Nevis will score two goals as well. Everton, for Everton, I think, who is it? Maybe Sigurdsson or Jarlison will score? I don't even know who Everton have anymore. But, <laughs> it? Do you know what I mean? Um, if you're losing against Villa away, then it's not it's not good, is it? Let's just be let's just be honest. Let's just be real. Alright, so Everton won. Wolves fall. Now. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to have to cut the music here. Let's just cut the music here. Because this is big. This is big. Arsenal versus Tottenham at the Emirates. Unai Emre versus Pochettino at the Emirates. Aubameyang versus Harry Kane. The North London derby. Is North London red or is North London white? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest derbies in history. One of the biggest derbies in history. Arsenal versus Tottenham, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about Tottenham first. Losing against Newcastle is the worst thing that could ever happen to them right now when you're versing Arsenal at the Emirates. Because <coughs> I know there are players that take that game seriously. Players will take that seriously and they do know the rivalry and they do know the history. Tottenham have to perform. 
if they perform the way that they performed against Man City, then they have a chance. They have a chance of snatching a win. A chance. Arsenal must win this game. It's not, even, it's not even because they lost against Liverpool. They just must win this game against your rivals at the Emirates, at your home ground. You cannot lose that game. You cannot lose that game. I don't care. I don't care. All right. Losing 3-1 against Liverpool. Yes, was it disgraceful? You're damn right it was disgraceful. When Huru made that review saying uh, not as bad as a result, I thought he was chatting out of his asshole. Because let's just be honest, right? When you're playing a diamond formation, your base it's your base it's basically suicide because you're giving Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold a freaking field day to run down your flanks and cross balls in like a madman. Why did Unai Emery not start Lacazette? He should have played three four three. He should have played Lacazette in centre forward. He should have played a Bamming on the wing, left wing, Nicholas Pepe on the right wing, then at left wing, at left a left wing back, you play Kalazanac. In midfield, you play What's his name? Danny Salabas. Next to him, you play Luke um, Torreira. Then at right wing, right um, wing back, you play Maitland Niles. Your two centre backs have to be Socrates, left centre back, David Luiz, right in the middle, heart, um, heart of the freaking defence. And then maybe what? Callum Chambers and your goalkeeper Leno. You gave Liverpool so much space. Arsenal gave Liverpool so much space. Space down the wings, it was ridiculous. And overall, in the first half, Liverpool just played outplayed them out the park because you get to see how they just pressed the pressing and the way Danny Salabas gave that ball away to Sadio Mane and that how Sadio Mane nearly opened the scoring just from the press, ladies and gentlemen. And it happened as well because I think what was it? Maybe I think it was that left back or right back. I think, what was it Alex, Alexander Arnold passed the ball? into, um, was it Salah, or I think it was Robertson that passed into him, Salah turned his man, and what happened, David Luiz, ladies and gentlemen, David Luiz, and this is what you're going to get from freaking David Luiz, this is what you're going to get for chump change, for 8.8 .8 million, this is what you're going to get for peanuts, for pennies, blood, that's the type of defending you're going to get, how are you going to pull Salah's shirt, how, what type of defending is that, tell him, if he skips past you, skip past you, don't pull his shirt, because he, he might actually miss, I doubt it. I doubt he was going to miss. He was probably going to score. But let's just be honest. Don't pull his shirt when you're in the box. And Salah's penalty was world class. He puts it right in the top corner. That's how you know he's a freaking good finisher. He's class. And the second goal is even worse. He makes David Lu He skips past David Luiz like he's a pile of dog shit. And puts it in the back of the net. In the bottom right -hand corner. That is woeful defending from David Luiz. How are you going to put your hands up like that? And let freaking Salah just... I'll dribble past you like that. At least make a challenge. Yo, that's something freaking what Mustafi would do. But he probably put his hand up to say that he's freaking offside. Oh, God. It's just ridiculous. Arsenal, oh, fucking disgrace. I was fucking disgraceful. I don't care what anyone says. You could say, oh, well, at least it's not 4 1. At least it's not 5 1, blah, blah. Bullshit, right? Arsenal's, Arsenal and Unai Emery got it completely wrong. You should not start your players like that. You, that was a wrong formation as well. Knowing that you're playing right into Liverpool's hands, it was pretty much stupid. You're basically trying to play counter-attacking football using the pace of Nicolas Pepe. He nearly scored, it nearly worked, but it just didn't work. Let's just be honest. He skipped past Van Dijk a few times. He did um, Robertson a few times. But let's just be honest. If you're going to play a formation like that, you're just dumb. Because you know, Liverpool, they, if you can mark Liverpool's what left-backs and right-backs, then you're caught. But you didn't do that, and that's the problem. When you give them that that much space, they're gonna whip balls in all day. So I think Arsenal's performance was just terrible. It was just a run tactic. Yes, they get battered at Anfield most of the time, and yes, it's not four one. It's just not four 0 or five one. But still, it was still disgraceful to lose three one like that. Honestly, I don't care what anyone says. All right. So for this Arsenal first Tottenham one. Last season, Arsenal beat Tottenham four two. Arsenal's performance didn't really show it. I think Tottenham will not can't afford another loss. Just based off Arsenal's performance and Tottenham's performance, it's going to be a very very entertaining game. It was a very very difficult one, but the final score between Arsenal 
and Tottenham will be Arsenal 3, Tottenham Hotspur 3. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it will be a draw. I don't see Arsenal getting the win and I don't see Tottenham getting the win either. I don't see Tottenham losing and I don't see Arsenal losing. They're both both teams are absolute dog wank. They've played like dog wank in the last few games. And so, therefore, the final score will be 3-3. You should be ashamed of yourselves. And that's the freaking end of the review, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave it in the comments down below what your thoughts will be. Who will win as well. Leave your score predictions as well for the other games. I'll see you guys in a bit. And peace.